So there are many, many other adaptive traits, but I don't want to bore you with it. The message is we are products of adaptation due to processes like selection that has shaped how we look. So is there a biological basis for race? And about two years ago, I was invited to a workshop in Durban uh, on social cohesion. And uh, firstly, I had to understand what the words meant. Uh, looked it up and got introduced to a lot of interesting things. But uh, I invited a friend of mine who used to work at the HSRC coming from social sciences, uh, Faye Reagan, to co-author this paper with me. Because when we would discuss things, it was very obvious that when I spoke as a scientist and she as a social scientist, we often talked across each other. And so this was a very good opportunity to work on such a paper because, again, we've been socialized in different spheres of science disciplines, but it, it helped us, or it helped me, to improve my understanding of some of the issues a bit better to be able to write the paper, which is in press in a book called Living Together, Living Apart. And so even though science has confirmed that patterns of human variation do exist, it has also provided ample evidence that there is no biological or genetic basis for race, and that race is socially constructed. So how I'm going to use some of the time left to try to build on that argument. And there are some definitions of race that are around, and if you uh, explore these definitions in living peoples today, there's no human population that will meet the criteria that has been used by Lewontin and others to define race. So this is what I did uh, for that workshop. I, I try to understand when we talk about race and we talk about difference and we talk about discrimination and, and many of the things that contributes to shaping us. Uh, and if we did you know, the normal math of a Venn diagram, what would be some of the biological issues and what would be the social issues? Uh, for that particular workshop um, uh, to be included in the discussion for social cohesion was the roles of gender, identity, race, and class. That's why that's in red. Then if we look at our constitution, and uh, section nine of the constitution says, you know, we shall not discriminate on the basis of all those issues, uh, words placed in, uh, seen in blue, where would you put it? Uh, is disability something that's social or biological? So I put it in the disability group. Shall not discriminate on the basis of pregnancy. Some people do still. That's a biological thing, and so on. Then I thought about some of the biological issues. Uh, we will see just now when we talk about racial profiling, you know, a person's gender or sex and race and all of these things come up in the definition. So, so we can argue, and it's actually putting up this diagram has uh, engaged a lot of discussion because people would argue where you would put things. Um, and I mean, science is advancing so fast today that you could take DNA, just the DNA from an individual, and you could put it through different filters of genetic markers. Uh, one set can go through markers that will uh, kind of find the most likely geographic region of the world. The second set are a suite of markers that have been associated with certain um, anthropometric features, uh, like you know the shape of your cheekbones and the jaw, and is your ear lobe attached to your face or is it a lobe? F various genetic markers, and because they've trained these uh, chips to to take photographs of individuals, do the measurements that they can detect from the genetic markers, assess the genetic profiles, they can take uh, 
a sample and eventually create an image with hair, uh, skin color, face shape, etc. That's a state of the use of a multitude of genetic information, photographic type information, etc. So, so this, is, this is how the field is actually, not just genetics, but is moving today.